tonight on The Truth Is. We enter the murky and dangerous world of private security contracting. But first up, we look at Asia's latest weapon for global domination, pop music. K-pop is an east-west mashup. It's kind of hip-hop, it's bubblegum pop, there's English hooks, and some would say kick-ass dance moves. It's really easy to look at K-pop, the dance steps, the bright colours, the sexy outfits, and just dismiss this as a quirky fad. But I've heard there's a much bigger story behind all the gloss. This could be evidence of how much and how fast our world is changing. So this is basically a K-pop factory. This is where they're making the video clip and uh, I'm gonna go and check it out. We are evil. Meet one of the latest K-pop groups. This is Evol. Evol stands for Effective Voice of Ladies. It's also love backwards. Here's one of them. Can we talk to her? She is juicy, so you could just ask her a few things, like, really quick. OK, so does she speak English? Not really much. OK, but, yeah. but her name's Juicy. OK, hi, Juicy. I'm Hamish. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> there are five girls in the band, and before I go any further, I need to explain a few things. You're going to see a lot of these poses in Korea. Everyone does it. They don't always mean something specific, but you should definitely try these at home. Oh, How are you? Okay. So what are you going to have to do here? Um, I think I'm going to do my own um, lip sync yep. scene. So I'm not quite sure. They didn't explain it for me yet. So I'm just waiting. So you just wait, and then they tell you what to do, and yeah. you jump in, and you yeah. make it all happen. <laughs> Until Sai's Gangnam Style came along, very few of us knew anything about Korean pop. This industry started with bands purely imitating American stuff. Now the music is written by Koreans for export to the rest of the world. They even do their own versions in local languages for every different market. Thai, English, Mandarin too. Are you done for now? Yeah, they were getting quite a quite a close shot there. Yeah. The girls are all in their early 20s, but there's a sort of robotic system of signing them as kids, training them up from 9 or 10 years old, a bit like the Disney system was. Why did you want to be K-pop stars? Mm. <laughs> singer and rapper. Uh, we are going to be singer and we want to be singer. Yeah. But do you want to be famous? You want to be loved? Is that part of the dream? Yeah, really. What happens if the fans don't don't like it? Um, I don't want to think about it. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> These videos are a little bit cheesy, but really extravagant. They spend big money on them because. These vids are the key to how K-pop has broken through to the West and the rest. South Korea is one of the most wired places on the planet and music is spread around via social networking. 
One local music exec said that a single video on YouTube has more impact than spending nearly a million bucks on advertising. It's been quite a long day here in the K-pop factory. Uh, they're going to be here until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's 10 p.m. now. So I think it's time for us to call it a night. K-pop may not be my kind of music, but it is a global phenomenon. Gangnam isn't even the half of it. It's being used by Korea as a tool for wielding soft power, diplomacy. Here they call it Hallyu, Korean wave. So I'm heading to meet two Canadians who've made this their life. Hi there, you must oh. be Martina. Hey, what's up? Hey, it's nice Martina, to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Simon, Simon, nice to meet you. How are you, How are you guys? Good, good, good. Grab a seat. I like the spot. We're just in the middle of eating. Yes. You want to try some exciting new things? Yeah, I'd love to try oh, something new. Yeah, what good. is this stuff? This married couple write a blog about K-pop and Korean life. It's called Eat Your Kimchi. Their blog has made them minor celebrities here. Everyone seems to know them. Kimchi, by the way, is a sort of pickled vegetable. It's actually quite tasty. So, tell me what Hallyu is. Um, what the Korean wave means to different people is totally different things. So, I think the, like, Korean news and Korean media, it, like, their idea of the Hallyu wave is that the rest of the world is starting to fall in love and be very fascinated uh, with and by Korea. Um, but to other people, how you wave is more just like, well, one aspect of Korea people are really interested in. For example, K-pop. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. The South Koreans are very ambitious with what they want to do with it, though, aren't they? I mean, that's the thing that really strikes me coming here, uh -huh. is that they, they do have this kind of world domination view of their culture, right? Well, I, I remember we, we spoke a, a couple times with the Presidential Council on Nation Branding, and which they actually have, like, a council on the idea of, of branding Korea around the world. And, you know, like from when we spoke with them a few years ago, they said that their goal is to make Korea a brand as recognizable as Coca Cola. Tell me what it is that you like about K pop. It's like the songs are so catchy uh -huh. and they don't stick to one genre. Like it's a brand new image with every single song that they put out, you know? So you're waiting, like, what are they going to do next? Like, uh -huh. what kind of crazy costumes are they going to have next? What dance move am I going to have stuck in my head all day long? Uh -huh. So that's really like the black hole that got us, like, sucked into K-pop and then we've never come out of it since then. You've been sucked into the yeah. K-pop vortex. You can't get out. You can't get out. Really? No. <laughs> all right, thank you. Simon and Martina make a great living from the advertising spots on their blog. They came for six months here and their success means they may never go back home. They see Korea not just as a cultural obscurity, but an ambitious, exciting place to be. It's really incredible seeing them embrace Korea in this way. We all grew up with Western culture dominating everything. But as the global power is shifting, I think so too is the cultural gap. Well, the car's ready. It's time to go to a K-pop concert. We're driving to a city south of Seoul called Changwon. It's host to a world K-pop competition. You'd be surprised to discover there are K-pop singers from Kazakhstan to Canada, and the Korean government has paid for them to fly in and perform here tonight. Hi, Stella. How are you? How are nice, you? To, nice to see you. Welcome to K-pop world. Thank, Thank you very much. I'm very excited about being in K-pop world. And Thank you. Your okay, so this is where they're all getting ready. Absolutely. Okay. Let's walk upstairs. This is Stella. She's our Korean producer. Pint sized, but don't let that fool you. She is absolutely unstoppable. The finalists are from 15 different countries. They competed in K pop singing competitions at home to make their way here. This is kind of the United Nations of K pop, here, all in one room. You can really see the Hallyu in full force right here. So there are some girls here from America too. We're going to go and have a chat to them. Hello, guys. That's Janae on the right and Simone on the left. They're from Florida. And believe it or not, they can rap in Korean. Give us a bit of your uh, of your act. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. What? Nigga, nigga, that's total wasn't me. All right, here we go. Nigga, nigga, that's total wasn't me. Nigga, nigga, that's total wasn't me. I'm young, though, but I'm up. She chigga bitch and this shit. Enjoy chigga me some gun. My Camilla do make your body rock. Nigga, nigga, go ching hot go. Hong gum to my bootan and gum talk. Why would you do this rather than go on Idol or X Factor or one of those shows? Um, because there's a challenge in this that is not in America, whereas 
it's not a big deal to see someone American doing American Idol. That's, that's what it's called, American Idol. But for you to see an American or a person from Mexico or a person from Australia um, doing K-pop, K-pop is, is a bigger deal. And we like that. We want to be a bigger deal. What you're seeing right here is a government strategy to spread the cultural cool of K-pop. It's not about the love of music. The theory is, if we love K-pop, we'll also love Korean brands, which means we'll buy more Korean stuff. More of those smartphones, more Korean TVs, more cars. A government bank here predicts every 100 bucks made from pop culture could bring in an extra $400 in the export of consumer goods. Now, that's potentially billions of dollars for this economy. So why do people get so addicted to this? I'm heading back to Seoul to ask that very question at a local uni. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey, I'm Hamish. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us, Professor. <coughs> Say, Annyeong. That's hello in Korean to Professor Bay. He reckons there's a scientific explanation as to why K-pop is so addictive. Those cups are reverse microphones that dampen sound. He thinks his inventions will help him live to 150 and that one of them could win the Nobel Prize. So can you just explain to me why it is that K-pop is, is so addictive? So, in a K-pop song, there's double the number of beats per minute than what your heart does, yeah. and that's what kind of gives you an energy lift. So, can he show me how it works, what the impact on the body is? Like, Professor Bay is attaching a monitor to my finger to see if listening to K-pop will increase my heartbeat. When your heart rate goes up, he believes it promotes happiness. I don't know. I've still got my doubts about this theory. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know about happiness, but it certainly reduced us to tears halfway through the interview. Our cameraman uh, kind of struggled to keep the camera straight. That's me holding it. <laughs> you all right, mate? <laughs> so during the song, my, my heart rate went yeah. twice as fast yeah. as what it was at resting pace. Yeah. Wow. So wow. one song can do that to you. Only one. I should listen to more K-pop. It would be good for my health. <laughs> He's been studying the health benefits of K-pop for seven years. I think Professor Bay, in his own way, is a bit like K-pop. Bonkers on the outside, but underneath, there is definitely some method to the madness. <laughs> he doesn't mind embracing the crazy. <laughs> So the music is addictive and it's good for you. What next can K-pop give to the world? Don't look if you get queasy. I'm paying a visit to South Korea's biggest plastic surgery hospital. Here you can basically have whatever makeover you want, but increasingly the makeovers people are wanting is the Korean makeover, the K-pop look. Dr. Kim, I'm Hamish. Nice to meet you. This is Dr. Kim. He runs the show here. This is his hospital, all 15 floors of it. And believe it or not, he's 50 years old. And yes, he's had some work done. So now the fact that Psy Gangnam Style is this global hit, yes. has that had an impact on your business? Yeah, big impact. When Psy has a big hit in America, we have more people from America. You have Americans coming here? Yes. Wanting to look Korean? Yes. So they specifically come to you and say, I want to look like a K-pop star? Yeah, many people do it. 
And tell me, what are the hallmarks of the Korean style? The Korean style is a little typically big eyes. We have a little more protruded cheekbone and mandible. It's not completely Asian, not completely Caucasian. A little more cute and pretty appearance. So, can they make anyone look like a K-pop star? Uh, so we're going to jump in the lift and we're going up to the 15th floor and this is where they take some measurements and some photographs of your face and I guess show you what you're going to look like as a K-pop star. Over 100,000 people come to South Korea every year for plastic surgery, mostly from China. There's also been a shift. Believe it or not, the number of Westerners is also on the rise. Wow. 7.5 millimeter. Right. I always knew I had a big and wonky nose. I didn't realize it was that bad. <laughs> they use this 3D imaging to help clients visualize what the results might be. I think my nose is uh, wreaking havoc with their system. It's too big. One, two, three, four, five, six operations. I could make it in the world of K-pop. <laughs> yeah, only one thing you need is exercising for the dancing. For the dancing, yeah. yeah. Don't look if you scare easily. This is me, K-popped. I think I might leave it at the 3D imaging. Couple of patients from Singapore. Great. Come on hello. in. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Hamish. Hamish, hey, I'm Christopher. Hello. Nice to meet you, Christopher. Hi, Hamish, I'm Jenny. Nice, nice to meet you, Jenny. Hi. So you're here for some yeah. treatment? Yes. This is Jenny from Singapore. Those markings on her face are where she's going under the knife. It's a birthday present from her husband. OK, you wanted to have upper eyelid surgery yes. and lower eyelid surgery at the yeah. same time. Okay. And I will keep all the fat from your arms, back and abdomen. I will oh. inject it on your face to make your face look younger. OK. So you like the Korean look? Yes, we love the Korean look. So are you a K-pop fan? Uh, not really, not really. But you like the way the K-pop stars yeah. look and yeah. the, the way they present themselves. Yeah, and the drama series as well. It's attainable. You can yes. do it. Yes. You can get on a plane, go on a holiday, yes. and come back looking like a, yes. a Korean pop star. Yeah, movie stars. Jenny went under the knife for about four hours. She's not expecting to look exactly like Evo when she heals, but. It's interesting how the success of K-pop is shifting perceptions of beauty. I'm performing a surgery. So this, this will make her eyes wider? Yes. Okay. Skin whitening creams used to be the big thing in Asia to help people look more Western. Now it's about looking more Korean. Open your eyes. Look at me. Open bigger. So she's actually awake during all of this and he's asking her to open and close her eyes so that he can see how effective the surgery uh, is, is, is being. Just like Beatlemania in the 60s made England cool in America, now all things K-pop have got the world hooked. Up next, Evil head off on their big international tour. South Korea was flattened by war and, incredibly, in half a century, it's turned itself into one of the world's most vibrant and outward-looking economies. Good day, mate. 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 There was a time people moved to the States in pursuit of the American dream. But these days, many feel that the West is sort of dying out, that dream's over. And Asia is the new land of opportunity. But, like everything, it does come at a cost. So tell me, uh, since you joined the band, you all live together, right? Yeah, we do. Tell me what that's like. We all live together in one room. <laughs> we all sleep in the... We all sleep in the same room, and there's only one bathroom in our house. So it's like a dormitory? Yeah, it's really, really small, so yeah, we're so tight in yeah. the house. But the token... Yeah, it's really, really... <laughs> <laughs> it's OK, Sajangnim. It's OK, 
you, you're talking to your boss yeah. now, right? Yeah, it's yeah. really small, and even yeah. it's really uncomfortable. Okay. It's okay, Sasaki. We're, <laughs> we're really enjoying okay. it. We're really yeah. Yeah. Oh, enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> we're enjoying our tight life. <laughs> Are you allowed to go out and party? No, we're actually not allowed to go out. It sounds like when you sign the contract, you're theirs. Yeah. They own you, right? Yeah, they own us. It's a lot of sacrifice, isn't it? Uh, there are. Many, many. I'm going to stop asking you questions, because yeah, you might get in trouble, I think. I want to be fine. <laughs> really? Well, it's OK. I'm 20 years old, but I don't have a boyfriend. It's OK. <laughs> are you OK? <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very few people speak this language outside of Korea, but through music, the South has managed to export itself to the world. Even Turkey has masses of K-pop fans. This morning, Stella is showing me a street where all the K-pop music agencies are located. There are tourists everywhere. The South Korean government decided to designate this strip of street as a Hallyu street since last year. And since then, it became one of the hottest tourist spots. Believe it or not, you had the bus. Tourist spot? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> For decades, fearmongers told us to be scared of some kind of Asian invasion. Which one do you like? The left guy, OK, the guitarist. But now we're embracing it. And you know what? It looks nothing like what anyone ever imagined. It's a friendly one. Oh, really good. It's our final day in Seoul, and I'm going to say goodbye to Evo. They're off to Malaysia. It's just after 5 in the morning, and I'm standing outside the girls' apartment block. They're heading off on their first international tour today, so it's an early start. Most groups like this will actually only last a couple of songs. The K-pop machine will continue to churn out bands, in part because it's so crucial to this nation's economic plans. Dark glasses. <laughs> you may have heard of this thing called the Asian century. and may seem like it has absolutely nothing to do with pop music. It's through the export of pop culture that we can see a bit of the future, the global dominance of Asian powers. This is the real life Asian century. Hey. You can join the K-pop conversation at 10.com.au forward slash the truth is. After the break, the truth is continues. We'll meet the men and women prepared to take a bullet for a stranger. Trust me, this is quite real. Go, 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 go. Private security contractors. Stay with us, we're heading to Afghanistan. <laughs>